So, okay, it's already past 20 past. And one advertisement for, for ourselves. So we have these proceedings, printed proceedings. Uh, they're available for 10 euros at the info desk. And now, my dear friend Jan will do a very interes interesting keynote about the history of Faust. Well, it's, it's been some it's years. I, I think it was at luck 2005. When you, when we talked, and, 2004, I and think. Two th was that like 2004 yes. already? Ah, yeah. okay. And then I still remember that uh, at in 2006 when, uh, no, that was later, when we uh, when we worked on on it the pattern matching uh, component I think together. In 2005 at uh, ICMC. ICMC, in, uh, right, right, right. In, uh, in the hotel room, exactly. <laughs> we worked. We so we basically we, we missed a together. lot of conferences <laughs> to work, but I think it was a good idea. Yeah. So Jan Olare, the inventor of Faust, will tell us something about, or attempt to tell us a bit about Faust's history. So Take it away, Jan. Okay. Thank you, Albert. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, so I have 1,200 slides to cover all the history period. Now, more seriously. I'm not historian, and I thought, okay, it's going to be cool to make a kind of history of Faust, and it's going to be quick, etc. And uh, and that's not the case. So it's a very incomplete and partial uh, history. In particular, we miss all the uh, Faust library uh, history, which is really a very important part of the of the of the. Um, Faust itself, in particular the work of uh, Julius Smith, of Romain Michon, uh, etc. But it's even more work to do a history of the, of the libraries. It's also lack of uh, description of several important projects like uh, Astre and, uh, and Fever, which were uh, uh, sponsorized by the uh, French Nation National Research Agency and uh, that were very important in the development of, uh, of Faust. And, um, and uh, Alain is, was part of uh, some of these, uh, of these uh, projects. So I'm not going to talk of that. And I'm not going to talk about Faust uh, in the academic environment, which is also very important because there are many courses uh, of Faust or using Faust in the, in the domain of, uh, of computer music. And uh, so this is very important also. But I won't talk about that. So uh, the starting point of Faust is 2001, and I'm going to try to explain, you know, it's a kind of stupid detail, but I'm going to tell you this stupid detail. So we were, um, uh, we organized in 2000 and 2001 a, a session about computer music in the Rencontre Mondiale du Logiciel Libre that was in uh, Bordeaux. Uh, it's a kind of every year, big conference about uh, open source software and uh, and in 2001 we invent invited people in 2000 we invited uh, uh, Paul Davies uh, uh, etc so it was our first uh, real uh, connection with the uh, Linux uh, audio community in 2000 and in 2001 we invited people at uh, from IRCAM and uh, people at IRCAM was working were working on the um, on JMAX which was an open source version of Max based on the on Java, and so they give presentation, etc. And uh, at some point, we we went into discussing the semantics of a Max patch. So, for example, if I ask you, what is the value of this produced by this patch? Uh, what are you going to say? Fifty-seven, for example. Yeah, sounds reasonable. But actually, depending on how you activate all the, uh, the communication, you can have very different results from 0 to 100 to uh, 107, etc. So, and this was really strange. As a computer scientist, you find this really strange. You have a language where you don't know the value uh, produced by, uh, by a program, and it depends on hidden states, so to speak. So the idea was, why is it? different from a more uh, arithmetic expression, so to speak. Why this is a patch and this is not, this is a tree uh, arithmetic expression. 
So the idea was why we should, we should have a semantics in audio language as simple as the semantics that we have in uh, arithmetic expression. And so the idea was, okay, we are going to do arithmetic expression on infinite streams of samples. This was the starting point of, uh, of Faust. Okay, so at that time at Gram, we were doing a lot of, uh, a lot, several programming languages for music composition that were very inspired by um, several formalism, in particular uh, combinatory logic and uh, lambda calculus, and uh, also the FP programming language, which was a source of inspiration, of direct source of inspiration of uh, Faust. We were also doing uh, computer music languages that were also very lambda calculus based and stream based like CLC, J calculus and uh, LOD. Uh, so this is a screenshot of LOD and uh, it's still a lot of ideas in LOD that are under exploited uh, in Faust and we would like to uh, exploit them. I don't have time to go into the details, but basically it's a new way to do programming by using lambda calculus and abstraction, but instead of writing an abstraction, you start by doing something and then you turn that into an abstraction by generalizing it, by making variables some of the parts of or ingredients that you have used to make uh, this, uh, this thing. And the J calculus, which is an older version of this uh, idea. And Albert, you remember that. Uh, it's very fascinating. Uh, maybe if we have time uh, during the, these two days, I will make a short demo of that. Okay, so uh, I don't have very much material about the 2001 version, but uh, this is from October 2001. And uh, so the syntax was starting to be defined. It was quite different from the syntax that we have uh, now. Um, we already had the type, uh, the typing system of the signal, uh, the idea that we should not separate uh, control signal and audio signal. They should be all part of the same uh, uh, type, just subtypes. Uh, in 2002, we had the first publication of uh, the uh, of the block diagram algebra, which uh, I think is a nice contribution of uh, of Faust. How we can combine things uh, in uh, in an algebraic way instead of patching by by doing manual connection, so to speak. And uh, so it's a little bit different from the actual the current one we have because we have only three operators. And uh, you can see that the uh, colon operator was used also to do the split, the colon, and the merge operator. So this was published at ICMC uh, 2002. In 2003, we start working on the, uh, on the compiler, the code generator, and in particular experimenting with uh, uh, vector code and sim the uh, code generation. Uh, the idea was from the very beginning, we should have a high level language, but it should be very efficient in the uh, code generated. So we start doing this kind of experiment at that time using uh, intrinsic uh, for Altivec and, uh, and for, uh, for uh, um, Intel uh, processor. And uh, the results were quite good, but it was really unmaintainable. Uh, so we decided at some point to switch to, instead of uh, just to uh, uh, leverage on the fact that uh, compilers are able to do automatic vectorization better and better. So instead of doing that ourselves, we're going to reorganize the code so that it's easier for the uh, C compiler to do the C++ compiler to do automatic vectorization. So in 2004 we start with the uh, with the Git and the CVS. So we have more history than uh, before. So in 2004 there is a, the not the definitive but the new version of the algebra with the split and the merge operator. But you can notice that the uh, sequential composition 
was very a little bit different than now. Now it's more restricted. At that time, it was more permissive. And designing a language is really you have this trade-off between flexibility and error catching, so to speak. And you have to deal with that. And uh, Pierre Chouvelot convinced me that it was not a good idea to have this flexibility here. And so later we will have the uh, colon operator, which is just the sequential uh, uh, requiring A and B to have the same number of uh, connections. Um, we made the... Uh, at that time, we tried to figure out what were people doing this kind of uh, algebraic version of block diagram, so to speak. And the only thing that we found uh, corresponding more or less to our need was uh, Stefanescu uh, algebra of flonomials. And we were able to see that it was very easy to re-implement all the operator of uh, Stefanescu into uh, Faust. And since Stefanescu had the proof that his algebra was allowing to uh, draw any kind of block diagram, we had the indirect proof that it was the case also for uh, Faust. Okay, then we had the uh, uh, apostrophe operator. Uh, apostrophe operator. Well, it's a detail, but it's quite convenient to use. By the way, are there people that don't know anything about Faust? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stefan. Uh, okay, so. Another evolution of the language was, so in the language you have the idea of using obviously lambda abstractions to do some programming and some uh, general pattern of, uh, of uh, code. And, uh, but it turns out that if you use the core syntax of Faust, some uh, routing can be very complex to express. For example, if you want to cross two cables, you have to write this kind of expression here. Uh, but you can see also an abstraction, an unapplied abstraction, as a kind of symbolic routing. And so this is what we did at that time. I don't, don't know if it's very clear, but if you have an abstraction, usually you apply this abstraction to some argument. But if you don't do that, you can either decide, okay, it's an error, or you can use it. And uh, the idea was to use it as a kind of symbolic routing for the, the signals. And also in 2004, we had already a bunch of uh, architecture file. And the idea of using architecture file to make the Faust code independent of his uh, usage was already uh, very strong. 2005, uh, so we introduced the with construction, which is a way to add local definition to an expression. So you create a kind of uh, lexical environment which is uh, private to an expression and you can uh, structure your code in a much cleaner way doing, uh, using with. Uh, then we introduce the, the concept of import, and, uh, which is like in including C, so to speak, so nothing very... And the concept of component, which is quite important. It's the idea that you can reuse a complete, even very complex Faust program and create a simple component inside another Faust uh, program. And uh, we also, um, and yes, that's it. Okay, uh, so in Faust you have a description of the uh, user interface, an abstract description of the user interface. So that was missing some way to represent signal. So we introduced the idea of uh, bar graph, uh, horizontal and vertical uh, bar graph. And because of that, and because a bar graph is only used as a side effect, so to speak, we had to introduce the, uh, a new uh, operator called attach. Uh, because we are in a purely functional uh, domain, uh, everything that is used to compute the output signals is part of the code. Everything that is not used to compute the output signals is not part of the code. So it's removed by the compiler. So you, have to, you need a way to attach some computation that is only used for side effects to the code. And this is what attach does. Uh, we start working on the... Uh, 
vectorize uh, uh, automatic vectorization uh, uh, backend uh, that I mentioned previously. And we uh, at the LSC, this is why Germany is so special for Faust, not only for Goethe, but also because we met Albert here, which was at the Linux Audio Conference. So the Linux Audio Conference is also very important to Faust. And uh, we were not there last year, but we will continue to go there, obviously, uh, etc. And, um, and also there that we met uh, Stefan Kersten that did the Super Collider uh, work. So it was the start of a long cooperation, Albert. You were young and beautiful. <laughs> I'm still young and beautiful, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, 2006. So 2006, we introduced this idea of hierarchical block diagram. So Faust has an easy translation from the code to the graphical representation. But if you have a large program, the graphical representation is just very complex. So the idea was how can we cre recreate some kind of uh, hierarchical structure on, the, on the, the diagram. So the idea is quite simple, is that if you have, for example, a definition, you say foo equals something, then this something is, has a property saying that its name is foo. Now, if you apply foo to uh, some other expression, the result will be attached to a concatenation of the name of foo and the name of the argument, etc., etc. So you create names for some of the expressions, and when you draw the block diagram, and if it starts to be complex, then you start to create several uh, files, and uh, you start to uh, and you use name to give name to these sub patches, so to speak. Uh, so I'm going to yeah. Important addition to the language was in particular the fact to add an interval arithmetics into the compiler. So when we compute with the compiler code, we know the interval of each signal. And this is very important, for example, if you want to control a delay line with another signal. You need to be sure that uh, it's not going to s look at the future of the signal, that, it's, uh, that it will fit into a limited amount of memory. So uh, this uh, algebra of intervals were introduced in particular for that. And we had also the first version of the online compiler and the first beginning of automatic parallelization of the code. Okay, uh, Jack Console and Pure Data, which was also very important to for the files to be used by the Pure Data community and uh, also a great contribution of Albert. So I'm going to speak a lot of you, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> but I need a t-shirt then. <laughs> So, and, uh, and this led to this publication at uh, LAC 2006 about uh, using uh, Faust Q and Super Collider. Okay, 2007, pattern matching. So, as we mentioned, we worked on this idea. So, Albert did his PhD thesis on uh, pattern matching algorithm. It used pattern matching uh, to implement uh, uh, programming language based on term rewriting in particular, uh, the Q and the pure uh, programming languages are based on that. And, and pattern matching is a must-have in any functional programming language. So uh, we decided to work together and, uh, and Albert donate his algorithm of fast pattern matching into uh, the Faust uh, code. And, and this is really a very nice addition because basically, when you, you program in Faust, you do some kind of metaprogramming. You are describing how to build an audio circuit, so to speak. And you can use the full power of pattern matching to do that. So these few lines of codes here are a description of an FFT circuit uh, done by Julius Smith. So you can see that in a few lines of code, you describe a full FFT circuit. And, uh, and it's parametric, just say the number of uh, the size of the FFT to just generate the, the, the code like this. So it's really a very powerful uh, uh, element of the fast programming language. So, and we start also, Stefan started working on the LLVM backend, which is going to have a huge impact on, uh, on fast. Okay, so we had some uh, 
And we start in 2007 having contribution of uh, Julius. And uh, as I say, I won't tell the story of the libraries, but if we have very nice libraries, it's thanks a lot to Julius that decided to implement everything he ever uh, d designed or uh, in, uh, in signal processing into, uh, into Faust. 2008. Oh, the idea of environment. So uh, Faust is very lambda calculus, but pure lambda calculus based, so to speak. And in particular, in pure lambda calculus, naming is something completely orthogonal to describing things. So, for example, you have many programming languages we, which have namespace, but usually you describe the namespace and you give the name of the namespace. In Faust, it's different. You have the concept of environment, which is a kind of namespace, of, of anonymous namespace, so to speak. And uh, so in Faust, it's you don't have to give a name to something. Something is defined by its content, not by its name. It's two orthogonal features. And, uh, and so namespace environments are a very powerful way to structure the code and to do some kind of, with many quotes, object-oriented uh, uh, programming. Uh, metadata declaration. We saw the power of metadata declaration with a Romain example. Uh, the idea that you should, that not everything is inside the Faust code itself or inside the Faust compiler, but you can write metadata and these metadata are going to be embedded into the resulting code and exploited or not by the architecture file that used the code. Uh, we introduce also metadata into the sliders. So the, the description of the user interface is very crude and very simple and very limited in Faust. But by adding this metadata inside the labels, you are able to give correspondences between uh, OSC and your sliders, or MIDI and your sliders, or uh, HTTP and your sliders, etc. Et so it's a very powerful way. Probably we will have to revise the way we do that because if you want to give a lot of correspondence, then it doesn't fit well into a single name of a slider, so to speak. So we, we are thinking about uh, more a CSS-oriented way to give all this metadata. Okay, and we, st we had the, the first uh, implementation of the automatic parallelization of the code, which is very important because in the era of multi-core machines, uh, it's important to be able to uh, use all these cores. And, um, and Faust being a functional programming language, it's quite easy to define all the possible parallelism of a Faust program. So we can do that. It's not that easy to make it efficient, but it's very easy to make to discover what can be done in parallel. So basically, we analyze the code, we create a graph, a directed graph of uh, nodes, and uh, then we do a topological sort of the nodes, and we use OpenMP uh, uh, pragmas to uh, structure the code as a sequence of parallel things to do in, in together. And that can be quite efficient. Depends really of the application, as we mentioned with uh, Stefan, there are code that cannot be parallelized at all because it's less efficient than the, the sequential code, and some code that works well. Okay, so we had uh, several architecture files and contribution of CETIL, 2009. Uh, so we restricted the, uh, the sequential composition in 2009. Uh, we introduced the idea of uh, in Faust, so you can create an, an uh, um, hierarchical user interface by saying, okay, I have a vertical group inside that open an horizontal group. Inside of this horizontal group, I put some buttons, sliders, etc. So you can do like th like this, but it's y you can also see, also see a flat way to, to look at that. And uh, you can just, into the name of the slider, give all the paths. And you see this uh, prefix V uh, colon, means this is going to be a vertical group. Uh, H colon going to be a, a horizontal group, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, at that time we had the uh, 
OpenMP backend, and we had also very important. Uh, I don't know who is using the mathematical documentation of Faust. Well, it's it's a wonderful feature. So it was designed for preservation purposes. How do you preserve code? Okay, you can you can keep the code into a file on the, on the cloud or whatever, but it's not going to prevent the semantics of the language to evolve and have problems running your code again in a different environment. So the idea of preservation, and uh, we work with that with, uh, with Alain, uh, is to make, to abstract the programming language in order just to keep the mathematical description of the program. What is the mathematics of the program doing? And, uh, and uh, the idea is that mathematics, it's also a language, it evolves, but slowly, and we suppose that we were going to be able to understand the mathematics of today into one or two centuries without problems. But we are sure that we are not going to understand a Faust program. Well, I should not say that maybe Faust will stay for 200 years, but uh, probably evolving. So, so programming languages are not a good vehicle for preserving. So the, the idea of this option that you can try online that it generates a mathematical description of what your false, false program is doing. So if you go to the online compiler and choose that, it can even generate a, a PDF file, LaTeX file, a PDF with all the equation of your program. It's not very readable, but you know that you have all the details in that, that uh, PDF. I uh, should speed up. Automatic parallelization already explained how it was done. Um, Okay, so oops, you see here an example of uh, of the mathematical uh, description. So if you have this simple uh, oscillator here, and you try to generate the do mathematical documentation, you have this description here. Okay, so architecture, CSAN, Octave, Pure, still Albert, Albert, sorry, uh, 2010. Okay, so in 2010, we have this idea of, uh, of being able to do, uh, 10 minutes, thank you, to do, uh, how to say that? Well, you have an environment, we have a list of definitions, these are all definitions that are related. To be able to create a new environment where you change, substitute some of the definition of the previous environment. Uh, we also started working on the, uh, on the uh, multi-rate version of Faust, that it's still not finished, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, the idea is just to introduce a, a minimal amount of new primitives to do uh, multi-rate uh, processing. The first one is the vectorized uh, um, primitive. It takes a stream uh, and it group it by vectors of a of a fixed amount of size. And uh, the resulting is a stream of, we have the same amount of, of data, but uh, the rate now is divided by the size of the vector. And you have the reverse operation, which is the serialized operation. And then some uh, access to the vector and concatenation of vectors. Uh, uh, we started a new Faust2 branch with the idea of having uh, not only generating uh, uh, C++ code, but also LLVM, but also other programming languages. So uh, we create an intermediate, f Faust intermediate representation, um, and uh, backends that take this representation and generate codes for the different programming languages we were interested in. We also started doing OpenCL and CUDA uh, experiments. Okay, let's skip that, 2001, 11, sorry. Uh, so we start to have OSC support at that time, and, uh, and in particular, Dominique did a very nice paper about all the or organization of the architecture and how you can uh, create your own architecture file. Uh, we also published with Karim Barkati uh, a description of the automatic documentation system. Um, and with Pierre Jouvelot, we wrote a paper about the, um, uh, the multi-rate version of Faust and its typing system. 
Okay, I should uh, speed up. Uh, 2002. Ah, 2002. We so we uh, worked on the OSC support and we had HTTP support. And, uh, and th this is very nice because you can create a uh, Faust application that embeds its own uh, web server. Uh, you can connect to this application to have a user interface uh, using web technology and control the, uh, the application from that uh, web uh, interface. And this is very convenient if you are doing sound installation where you have a small... Uh, who is doing that? <laughs> Okay. Ah. Okay. That's 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 uh, allowed then. Uh, so y uh, you 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 have an installation. You have using a Raspberry Pi, for example, etc. You don't have a monitor control uh, attached to that, but using the HTTP, you can just remotely control this application. Uh, and uh, and then a very important step that already mentioned by Stefan was libfast the li library version of the Faust compiler that you can embed into your own application. So we started working on different projects like uh, Faust Live, Faust Gen, uh, and later C-Sound or Oliver uh, work and uh, Antescofo and Falk, et etc. Uh, we also, uh, uh, in 2012, had a revised version of the online compiler. and. Uh, remote control uh, via the web and online compiler, we start thinking about the web as a, a major platform for Faust. So uh, this is an example of FaustGen. As if you are using Max, FaustGen is really a very, uh, the must to, uh, to work with Faust and uh, inside Max. Why? Because you can just edit on the fly the code and you have all the, uh, your patch in your environment, so you test your code inside its natural environment, so to speak. Uh, okay. Ah, new contribution by Albert Graf. I'm sorry, always Albert. LLV2, um, which is also a very nice contribution. And uh, we start also web audio uh, um, code 2013. Uh, so two new, uh, who have ever used inputs and outputs? Five minutes, okay. Nobody, okay, likes the automatic documentation. Uh, so, which is a kind, of, thank you, Albert. Uh, it, it's a kind of way to, uh, uh, to know the inputs and the number of inputs and outputs of, uh, of a Faust expression. And so, using pattern matching and this, you can, for example, do this stereo stereoize function. It takes any Faust program and turns that into a stereo Faust program. Uh, and uh, here you have all the, the cases according to the number of inputs and outputs of this P program. So then we had the waveform, which was supposed to be a way to enter a short list of parameters, a short list of parameters. And then you have guys like this guy, Christophe Le Breton, that start to, okay, now I want to convert uh, wave files and uh, put 300 wave files are converted with waveform, and then complain, you know, the speed of the compiler is not that fast anymore, etc. So, you know. Um, okay, so how to embed Faust into your compiler? Faust Live, which is a very nice environment. Who have ever used Faust Live? Okay. Uh, the ASM.js backend, which was a parenthesis in the story, but a very important step. And uh, unfortunately, so uh, ASMGS is a subset of, uh, of uh, JavaScript that can be uh, uh, easily uh, compiled efficiently because it has some kind of typing annotation, etc. But so we have the backend for ASM.js. Uh, new architecture, and in particular, the uh, Android architecture developed by Romain, um, 2014. So 2014, we had this first concept of uh, smart Faust applications. So all these smartphone applications were developed by Christophe. There's 14 of them, something like that. And it was a, a large uh, participatory concept with, with that. It was very nice and very fun. And it started a whole uh, s new story about using uh, mobile phones for, uh, even if obviously we are not the, the first, but. I think we were the first uh, using them purely gesturally, uh, and, and that's 
was very interesting. Okay, so Faust Live presented at LAC. Uh, Faust Service, the idea of being able to remote compiling using a compiler as a service uh, approach uh, so that you don't have to install everything and uh, have problems compiling uh, libfaust, for example, or even if the... Okay, so the architecture, uh, blah, blah, blah. OWL, yes, important, so we start to have uh, um, going more and more into the embedded world, so to speak, to uh, being able to program uh, OWL uh, effect pedal, or also an implementation of uh, an architecture for ROS. ROS is a robotic operating system. It's quite similar somehow with, with Jack, but for robotic system. Quite interesting. 2015. So, uh, to experimental primitives, enable and control, which was never finished, but someday maybe <coughs> we will finish them. The idea is to be able to suspend uh, uh, the, some computation, but the problem is that we want to make that in a mathematically clean way to do that, not to uh, change too much the mathematical semantics of a Faust program. So the idea is that uh, enable, for example, takes two input, the input signal and the control signal. When this control signal is one, you just have the input. When the control signal go down to zero, when it reaches zero, then the computation of X is suspended, so to speak. So you can enable and disable part of uh, the program. Uh, then fast for the web. Uh, so by generating SMGS code, uh, wrapping it into uh, uh, everything needed to use the Web Audio API, you were, we were able, thanks to Stefan, to, to generate uh, uh, web uh, uh, Faust application for the web. And then the next step was to have a, a JavaScript version of, uh, of libfaust in order to embed the Faust, as uh, already explained by Stefan, embed the Faust compiler into a web page. And uh, from that, we were able to do Faust Playground, for example. This is the first version of Faust Playground in 2016. Uh, okay, uh, great inference, blah, blah. Uh, Falk, Romain and uh, Ger did uh, this uh, uh, pornographic uh, piece of code. <laughs> um, and then uh, people at, uh, and Pierre is here, uh, people at IRCAM started to do ex an experimental version of uh, Antescofo where uh, uh, the Faust compiler is also embedded. So you can have a an Antescofo score, and inside that score have part of the uh, computation uh, expressed in, uh, in Faust. And then uh, we uh, completely rewrote the, the Faust Playground in TypeScript, and we have a nice version of Faust Playground, and we use it really a lot with kids to do some kind of simplified Faust programming. But you can use it also as a kind of patch environment. You can drag and drop Faust files inside the scene and, uh, and just use them. They are compiled on the fly, and you can use them. And then you can export that. You have an export feature, and you can generate uh, Android uh, application, for example, from the, the, the patch. OK, uh, Bella, uh, Oliver, uh, Faust VST, a new version of VST, which works better than the old version. And we start also, uh, no, it's not true. OK, so Albert, still Albert Graf. I present Albert Graf. Okay, 2017, I'm almost finished. So the latest addition is SoundFile, uh, which is going to replace the waveform that was misused by guys like Christoph. And, uh, and um, so the, sound, the idea of SoundFile is going to be a user interface element. So you say, okay, here I want a file. Maybe I want to have a dialogue on the user interface to select a file on the operating system or uh, select among a predefined resource, or maybe it's a fixed resource. And then you say, I want this uh, to be a two-channel uh, stereo file. Then the system will load, the, us the, the architecture file will load the file for, for, the, for you and turn it into whatever number of channels it has into a stereo uh, uh, system. And then you have an input which is the reading index of this file that you can control and make run, and it will produce the, uh, the output channels. 
but the three first output uh, outputs of the of this uh, sound file will be the which order the the length of the file the sampling frequency and the real number of channels and then all the, the channels okay so and then we have also a very important web assembly backend and now our all our web tools are based on this web assembly backend uh, we start experiment with uh, sample accurate control um, all the controls are taken into account at the beginning of the buffer so if you have a list of control you can split the buffer into uh, small parts so that at the beginning of each small part you have the the change in the, in the controls and the juice and uh, and uh, Romain did the and Julius did a huge work to reorganize all the libraries. So now we have very well organized libraries with documentation, etc. We are still working on that. Uh, first two API already mentioned. Architectures and conclusion. I mean time. Okay. So well. Looking at this partial history, we see that a lot of things have been done, but we have plenty of ideas to evolve the, the, all these things. Uh, but the story is that it's not only all about building tools, it's al also about building a community, and, and this has real power. You know, we are a small team, we are four researchers at Gram now, we were only three. Uh, and, uh, and, and we were not being able to do all that alone, obviously, and, and this is the power of open source software and the community. So th this is not about building tools, it's also about building a community, and this is why this first IFC is so, so important. So thanks, Albert and Roma and all the team, uh, Faust and Furious team, for doing that. So thank you. Okay, let me see. Is this on? The red light means no battery. <laughs> now? Yeah, okay. Is signal clear still? Okay. So, Jan, thanks a lot for the very interesting talk. Memories come back about various confer conferences and meetings at uh, Jan's lovely house, which is uh, in really great whereabouts, where we sat down and thought Both about the multi-rate stuff and started uh, and uh, started hacking on stuff that <laughs> never materialized, but other no. went uh, went quite far. So mm -hmm. that's very interesting and and really a nice lesson for us. And uh, okay, and so let's open uh, let's open it to questions, please. Yes, uh, maybe the mic. Actually, so I have a very simple question. Do you document formally your normalization algorithm? The normalization, the normalization algorithm. You know, so I'm assuming you get a single loop. You guarantee a single loop at the end, or do you not? Because um, I can't find it anywhere. I really want. No, to. it's not really documented. All the internals <laughs> of the uh, of the compiler are not really uh, documented. Um, basically, to just for everybody to, to understand, uh, I think the, the question is that the way to generate the code, you need to normalize, so to speak, to put into a normal form the, the, the signal expression inside the compiler. And the idea of the normal form of Faust is to find a normal form which, when you translate it into C++ code, is going to make code efficient. For example, if you start by... Uh, multiplying a signal by 0 0.5 and then do a delay line of uh, 10 samples, then you can reverse the two. And it's better to reverse the two because then you have more chance to, uh, uh, to, uh, um, to have a common uh, delay line, for example. So all the normalization process is about all this uh, symbolic computation, simplification, and rearranging of the code, but it has never been uh, really defined. It's in the code. So you're certain it terminates in all cases? Sorry? You're certain it terminates in all cases? Because I mean, you in the Lambda calculus, right, you can't normalize yes. without guaranteed termination. 
So ah, okay. So, okay, that was your question. With well the pattern matching, you are Turing complete, so you are not sure to uh, to find any normal form at okay. this stage. Stage uh, in the fast compiler also, you you may have code that uh, never uh, compile, uh, but the code once generated will always uh, terminate it. Obviously. You had those nice slides where you showed like new architectures per year, mm -hmm. where there also removed architectures that got lost over the years. Yes, yes, we remove. Uh, uh, I don't know if we still have uh, an uh, unsupported folder for architecture, or we even remove that. But we drop some architecture file to unsupported. Yeah, the the problem that we have is maintaining all this code. So. We need to, it's a trade-off between doing new things and maintaining uh, things. And uh, this is why the community is also very important. For example, we the, the compilation of VST plugin for Windows doesn't work uh, well at all. So we need some experts, and I'm launching an, an, uh, a request of some uh, Windows expert that could take care of uh, maintaining uh, the VST plugins on files, for example. That would be yeah, you mentioned multi-rate. Um, is there a plan to really um, implement it in an intrinsic way, so to say that you have that you could possibly define in one expression you have this sample rate and another expression you have this sample rate and Faust does the resampling? Is is this how I have to to imagine it? Because I would like that pretty much. Okay, so. Um Probably what we are going to do, for example, the, 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 uh, the sampling, the, the rate inference algorithm that is published, it's just suppose that everything is, uh, uh, was uh, uh, sampled or downsampled uh, before. Uh, but obviously it's not li like that that you want. You want, for example, if you have a, a signal at some rate and a, a control signal, you don't want to change the sampling rate of the, uh, the, the signal. So there are these are all these details that we need to, uh, to figure out, so to speak. But um, yeah, it's not going very fast, I must say. But we, we, we're, we're very happy to discuss of that if you have special needs or, or ideas, obviously, yes. Or use cases, uh, yes. Uh, typical use cases to have an FFT. Currently, we can do an FFT, but it runs every sample, which is not very. Uh, for example, you could use the network streaming architectures, and so you could do buffer rate control. And that's that w this would be a use case I had in mind for mm. this uh, mm. particular course. Uh, but I th suppose there are more use cases. What probably we will not able to do, uh, at least uh, in the foreseeable uh, future, is to have uh, dynamic rates. So it's. Everything in Faust is fixed, and we stay like that. So you are building a kind of circuits, and everything is fixed. But yeah, it could be an idea. True. Yeah, just to mention that one important use case, of course, is video. We'd like to do be able to do video as well. I mean, FFT is one of the mm. important use cases, but the other one would be video. So, any other questions? Do you have any thoughts about the debuggability of Faust code and how <laughs> that can be improved? Because um, I, I was asked a question about to debug? it when I did a presentation <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. I said, yeah, it prints out ridiculously long errors. Yes. <laughs> but you know, in C++ with the template sometimes, uh, it's not as yeah. bad, but uh, no, yeah, I, yeah, sure. <sighs> no, not really. I, I'm sure that not spend a lot of time thinking about how to improve that, but that's certainly a, a problem. That's certainly a problem. With the uh, with the interpreter of uh, Stefan, for example, you can you are able to catch some uh, runtime errors or or uh, yeah, yeah. It's an open problem. Yes, good question, but no answer. <laughs> PhD, yeah. yeah. And it's complicated because of this uh, template-based approach. So when you have an error at some point, it can depend of piece of code that were uh, in very different places. 
So we should at least keep track of uh, where every piece of code comes from and say, okay, this error is produced and these are the, all the lines of code that are involved in that. But besides that, I don't know. Okay, any other questions? Anyway, he, you'll be here all day yeah, and, and tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks again, Jan, for the great talk. Thank you.